Hey everybody, it's Adam, live and in person for you. Hey everybody, it's Adam, wonder who he'll interview, call me Adam.com. Alakazam, Alakazoo, I get to interview Scorpius Malfoy from Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, Woohoo! I am so excited today to talk to Eric Christopher Peterson, who is starring in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child on Broadway. And the show is in the midst of celebrating its fifth anniversary. In case you don't know me, my name is Adam Rothenberg. And for the past 14 years, I have been cooking up the secret sauce to a memorable interview. With over 1,500 interviews under my belt, I have been serving this recipe over and over again by pulling back the curtain to reveal the secrets of my guests' lives and careers. So without further ado, please welcome Eric Christopher Peterson. Hi, Eric. Hello, thank you for having me, Adam. You're welcome, thank you for being here. So like I just said, the show is celebrating its fifth anniversary on Broadway. What is it like to be part of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child? It, it's a dream come true in so, in so many ways. Um, I, I grew up with Harry Potter and I grew up loving the theater and now I get to combine those two loves um, professionally, which is uh, amazing. And uh, to get to be around celebrating the fifth anniversary on Broadway has been really special. And uh, yeah, the, the, the fans love the show and the people that come to the show and don't necessarily uh, consider themselves a fan to begin with, walk away a fan. And um, it, it's, it's really special to, to get to hear how, how people are impacted and how people love going on this adventure with us. And you play Scorpius Malfoy for, for everyone who doesn't know. So he is the son of Harry Potter's arch nemesis who Harry Potter's son befriends in the show. Yeah, yeah, totally. So yeah, I play Scorpius, yes. who's Draco's son. How did you prepare for the role, and how do you sort of get into character each night? And preparation for me really comes back to the script. Um, I I have read that script over and over and over again, all through the auditions, all through the rehearsal process, and uh, still is is we're up and running. Um, I, I come back to it, and and just looking for the nuggets in in the the beautiful words that. Um, Jack Thorne have have uh, scripted and exploring exploring those those options is what it what it really comes down to for me is is finding finding where the text can take me and, and where my scene partners can take me, um, and and then every night it's uh, sort of a, a a fun process of warming up and getting into the costume kind of you know piece by piece and my. Um, my blonde wig that makes my hair even more blonde and um you know seeing seeing myself in the mirror as scorpius just sort of helps to start the start that transformation and the show the show is three and a half hours in length so how do you keep your energy up how do you sort of like guard your energy like you know if friends say hey let's go out you know over the weekend or on a day off from the show how do you sort of guard your energy because you need a certain amount for the show? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's really about balance because um, I, I do have to be really smart and specific about how I use my energy and what kinds of foods I'm eating and making sure I get enough sleep um, because the show is, is an epic adventure uh, and it, it, requ it requires, you know, it requires a lot of presence and um at the same time, you know, you need to feel like you're living a, a life and I, I need to go see I need to go see other plays when I can, because that really fills me up creatively. Um, but but yeah, it, it comes down to just taking care of yourself and listening to listening to my body. And now, when did you come into the show? Because you didn't you didn't start with the show five years ago. You yeah. came in later in the run. Yeah, totally. Um, I had my first performance on November 15th of uh, 2023. So I've been with the show for about six months now in performances and then obviously a little bit of rehearsal time before that. So what is it like to come into the show here? It's been running for for five years. And and, and so at the time you came in, if you came in in November, um, so that was in the middle of its fourth year. Mm -hmm. So how how is it to come into 
you know, a cast that's already established? What, what how did you get acclimated into the yeah. Band? Yeah, totally. I'm, uh, it, it was a unique experience because it was not something I'd ever done before. I'd only ever worked with a show where I'd been with it from the beginning. Um, and so it, it was new to me, but it was so easy and, and the company was so wonderfully welcoming. And I, I came in with five other new cast members at the same time. Um, uh, Joel Myers, who is Albus, and Imani Jade Powers, who plays Delphi, um, coming in also. So the three of us kind of got to build, you know, our our version, and then the the company, um, the people from the San Francisco cast and the people from the New York cast that uh, had already been with the show, uh, really just welcomed us right in and and folded us into um, into the production and. Um, yeah, it was it was really fun and seamless. And you mentioned earlier in the interview that there are people who come see the show who are huge fans of Harry Potter, and then there are other people who come see the show who maybe never saw the movies or haven't read the books. So what does the show offer for that diehard Harry Potter fan? And what does the show offer for somebody who's not as familiar with the story? Yeah, I, yes, the show totally offers so much to both of those demographics. I, I think for the diehard fans, you know, it's this this world uh, is for you as I'm as it was for me. I'm sure so vivid in your mind from from the stories and and then from the films, and um, to get to immerse yourself in it in the same room. And it's physically happening in front of you, uh, and these characters are are breathing the same air as you. I think is is so special and is one of the beautiful pieces about live theater. Um, and then for the people that maybe don't know Harry Potter, I think um, it, it is it's it's a new story. It has it has its roots in um, the original seven books, but uh, it, it is a new story. And uh, Scorpius and Albus. Uh, you know, they they only pop up in the, the very epilogue of the last book, um, which is the jumping off point of our play. And so I think that, you know, it, the, the play totally welcomes you into that magical world, um, even if you have not experienced it before and, and allows you to go on this new adventure and experience, you know, this incredible magic uh, in, in the same room as you. Uh, I'm on stage with it and it's mind blowing. And and so I know the show does have a lot of special effects with the magic, and obviously you, you can't give away any of the secrets. But what do you feel is like the most mesmerizing moment with the magic, and and Ooh. how how do you know? You know, obviously you know the behind the scenes because you're in the show, but how is it still like as surprising for you as it is for? somebody watching from the audience yeah I, I, I it's it's hard it's hard to pinpoint a specific moment because there are so many moments that just like it's 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 magic it's totally magic um and scorpius is a real geek about magic he is such a magic nerd he loves it uh even though he's grown up around it every every magical thing is just so much fun for him and, and it blows his mind and he loves experiencing it and I feel the same way it's got everything um you know there are there are big moments that will blow your mind and then there are these these little moments that you have to pay attention to and the attention to detail it's it's like whoa wait did that just happen um, and what have been have you had any on stage mishaps or any kind of you forgot a line or you forgot a prop or something like that that has happened in the time you've been in the show Mm, oh, I um. It, at one point in the show, I wear glasses, and I accidentally knocked one of the lenses out of the glasses, and I just kind of heard it like skitter off stage. And then I and then I only had one one lens in my glasses. That was kind of a that was kind of a silly one. And that was that was only like my second show, I think. Too, it, it hasn't happened again since. That one was pretty funny. Oh my! And um, I know we do have to wrap things up soon, so I do want to find like, out if you could do a magic spell for anything what would you what would you who would you put a spell on or what would you what magic would you create yourself you know this question goes back a long ways adam i've i've been thinking about this since i first read the harry potter books as a child 
um, the Accio spell mm -hmm. when they, they, and they can make anything, you know, the Accio water bottle and the water bottle flies to them. I have always thought that that spell was misunderused. I mean, come on, can you, you're sitting on the couch, you're ready to watch some television and you've forgotten to grab the remote. Accio remote, I, it, it's, it's so useful. And um, I, I never thought they used it enough uh, in, the, in the books. That, that, that's my favorite spell. I wish I could do that one in real life. Oh my God, I love it. It takes me back to the days of Bewitched when Samantha was first showing Darren that she was a witch and he would be like, well, what can you do? And he was like, I really would love, uh, you know, a cigarette and she whipped up a cigarette or I would love a drink and she whipped up whatever drink he wanted. Uh, right so there. I, yes, I love, yeah. I love that it has like a, spe a magic trick like that has continued on and and it you know it comes into its own here in the show i mean it's just incredible yeah yeah sometimes i try it when i'm in private <laughs> accio chapstick it doesn't work it doesn't work oh <laughs> maybe one day you never know keep trying yeah i'll keep trying right. i'll keep trying so um my last question for the interview is for somebody who hasn't seen the show yet what is one reason you would tell them to come see the show well, I mean, I think that live theater in general is like a transformative experience uh, and such a beautiful exercise for your empathy muscles um, that, you know, supporting live theater first and foremost is like so good for society and so good for the individual. So please go see a show. And I so hope that you will join us at Harry Potter and the Cursed Child because this, this show means the world to me. And I think the adventure it takes you on uh is is truly beautiful it's it's got some incredible laughs some awe inspiring special effects and i think it has a lot of heart to it uh it's something that i see um audience members you know children to adults uh connecting to deeply every day and um i would love to share that experience with anyone who wants to come see the show Oh, that's amazing. Well, everybody watching, definitely go see Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. It's at the Lyric Theater on 42nd Street in Times Square. And the show, I just also want to mention, um, it. like I said, at the beginning of the interview, it is celebrating its fifth anniversary, but it has also won in London. It won nine Olivier Awards, including Best New Play. And on for Broadway, it won six Tony Awards, also including best new play and um it has also has the distinction of having the guinness book of world records the guinness world record as being the highest grossing non-musical play in broadway history so a lot of accolades for the show and and everybody watching has to come see it and you will get to see eric christopher peterson in the show and I can't thank you enough for your time today. Thank you so much, Eric. Yeah, yeah. So lovely to chat, Adam. Thank you too. You. It was great to see you. Yeah. Bye, everybody. He'll get the dirt and the scoop and the story for he happens to be in the know. Just ask anybody who's had him at all the place for the business of show. Call me Adam.com.